Hey, everybody. Sorry, I'm having a little technical difficulties out there. Uh, I want to say hello to Mr. Barry and to Braden and Craig. How is everybody doing tonight? Man, we got a show for you tonight. Tri-Tip Junkies here. Meaty Mike. Oh, my gosh. Meaty Mike. It is so good to see you, brother. I am very humbled to have you on the show. We've got a show for you tonight. It's a double header. And Monica will be on here in a moment. She's still a little bit under the weather, but she says she's coming. And Jared's on. Thank you, Jared, very much. Appreciate it. Uh, we have Stephen from Cooking with Stephen and Jacqueline. And, man, I am so excited to get him on here and talk about some Trini-style barbecue. And uh, I dig this guy. He's the moderator's moderator, guys. And then after that, we have Charlie from Pickles Barbecue. And you know everybody's going to want to step in and, and talk to that guy. He's, uh, yeah, he's crazy. So let's bring Stephen on. Stephen, my brother, how are you? Doing fine, Mike. Good evening to everyone in the chat. Good evening, Mike. How are things? Good evening. It's very well. Guys, I want to uh, first start off by thanking Stephen for doing this. This is, uh, uh, I'm honored to have you on the show. I really am. And uh, I, I dig the style of food that you make. I, I kind of want I want to get into that. Not there's no kind of about it. I want to get into that. Got Chris from Eastman Farms on. Hello, Chris. So before we do that, I want to uh, kind of showcase Stephen's last two videos. And as you, you can see there, uh, that smoked pork, oh, a smoked pork loin. No, that's Charlie. Good gosh. All right. I thought like, kept thinking that is just wrong. So the grilled lamb, I was in the pork loin, and I think, no, wait a minute, he did lamb. <laughs> so sorry about that, guys, technical difficulties. That lamb looks amazing. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the video yet, make sure to check it out. And I believe you paired it with the uh, garlic and rosemary mashed potatoes, correct? Yeah, roasted potatoes. Yep. Oh, dude, it looks so good, so good. So thank you for that. So, Stephen question for you how long have you had your channel brother probably about a little over a year okay actually started doing videos this year okay yeah you were doing them big time on instagram though weren't you yeah, yes I was, yes i was on instagram okay yeah i remember uh, uh looking at your instagram account going this goes back a lot further than the channel did so, right on. Yeah, I think a lot of people started with Instagram. I know I did. So, and I know this is going to be an obvious question. Hey, Laura, how are you? Uh, obvious question, but how did the name of your channel come about? <laughs> well, long, long, right. long story. I'll try and make it short. Actually, oh. it was, actually, it was first um, Jacqueline and Dad. Okay, and then like. When I start popping into East, in Chris's life, it's like everybody, um, is Jacqueline there or is it that day? You know, because you know, Chris's um, lives are more for adults. Then. You know, so then um, Charlie suggested from Pickles Barbecue, suggested I change the name. Okay. So I just went, so I went with um, Stephen, and Jack, Stephen and Jacqueline. Okay. And then, well, when I started doing videos now, that's how it really came about cooking with Stephen and Jack. All right. Yeah, I, I kind of figured it had something to do with your daughter. <laughs> She's adorable, too, by the way. So that's awesome. She says she might pop in for a little two minutes, a couple of seconds to say hi to everyone. Okay. Yeah, that would be awesome, dude. Would love that. Um, so I am fascinated, in, and you tagged me on an Instagram post, and, and I appreciated that very much so. Monica, Monica finally showed up. What is going on, Monica? I'm oh, there's Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Right on. I can't see Jacqueline's head. Oh, I see the top there she is. Happy belated birthday, by the way. I saw your video. It was awesome. So. Right on. You got a proud dad right there. That is way cool. Oh, we got the babes. <laughs> How exciting. Yeah. 
So, Stephen, and, and this is for Jacqueline, too. Jacqueline, do you like training style cooking? Yeah. Yeah? What is, what's your favorite part about it? Sorry, sweetie, I can barely hear you. Okay. You said you didn't have food after. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Right on. I, I get that. Stephen, tell us a little bit about Trini style cooking. Well, I mean, as, so as I understand it, there's like three or four main spices that you have to have to do it. I could be wrong. Uh, it's like your basic garlic, onion, ginger. Okay. Like I, I did a video with um, green seasoning, which actually she did. Okay. Called Trini style green seasoning, which is a blend of celery, green onions, ginger, pimento peppers, scotch bonnet pepper, garlic, ginger. Very cool. Are, are these... like, it's, it's almost something like a chimichurri sauce, but different. Okay. Gotcha. Are these stuff, are these items, uh, things that are available on, in Trinidad and Tobago? Like, do they grow naturally or... Do people yeah, they, no they go naturally they go naturally yeah. okay and so they're they're easy to get so it's just yeah. one of those things that over time people just did their thing right what, what we usually import might be like the garlic okay and the onions but like the, like the green onions or what we would what we call um what you all call scallions mm -hmm. we call it um we call it side. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And then that just grows out there and, and right on. Do your kids and like the, do your kids like the spicy food? Yeah, they grow up with it. So no, your your terms of spicy is a bit a different meaning to us. Yeah. All your terms of spicy more or less means like hot then. Yeah, hotter. Right, but then our term of spicy is being just a strong more blend of different seasonings, then. not necessarily cut to the tongue. Then. Okay, so it, so I imagine you guys have food trucks on the island, right? So right. if you go if you go from like food truck to food truck, is is the spice blend similar in nature, or can you find some wild swings of of different kind of spices? If I were to buy a, a chicken leg at food truck A and food truck Z down the way, would it be like wildly different? Could it be wildly different or? It could be wildly different. It could be similar. <clears throat> okay. Just like anywhere else, people do their barbecue yeah. and they, they do it their own separate way. Do you find that like, like here in the United States, we have regions, right? That regional foods. These guys like certain kind of barbecue sauce. These guys do. Do you guys have that as well in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, yes, because we are a multicultural um, island, so you get a bit of Creole food. Okay. You, get some, you also get some East Indian delicacies as well, which is one of the main dishes as well, Cur different oh. curries. Okay, I didn't realize that. Interesting. Right. Okay. Well, it was a British colony at one time, so I could see where the East Indians would come in there. Yeah, absolutely. That is cool. I like that. You get, a variety, you get a variety of different stuff. Yeah, then that's cool. That's kind of the spice of life, right? And then we're like the normal fast food like everywhere else as well. Yeah. Yeah, fast food's fast food. I'd put some I, I'd put some spices on it and, and go. <laughs> that's just me. So in your opinion, for Trini style cooking with, with the spices, what is the best meat to cook? Well, what pe what people usually crave over here for like cooking on a day, let's say like you're going to the river or to the beach, is like a curry duck. Ah, duck. Okay, I'd have never have guessed that. Or curry goat. Okay, goat. I could see that. Yeah, I've had goat before. It's good stuff. Well, What's like, your favorite? For, well, for me, I I like my pork. I like pork for me. Okay. Oh, who doesn't like pork, right? Pork's the way to go, <laughs> I think. But, okay. But, but like if you're gonna if you're gonna outen to cook by the sea by the river, especially, 
basically you know, almost sure we have a hundred people there. Okay. Ninety ninety percent of everybody going to be cooking curry dog. Interesting. Okay. That is, I find that fascinating. Is, is curry is kind of a staple, like uh, I know for the Indians, they love no, they love curry. No, don't get me wrong. Our curry down here is different to the curry from actual India itself. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It's a different blend because, like in India, there are some curry which may look a bit reddish in color, which is a more tandoori style. Right? Okay. If you watch a couple of videos, what I did with curry, it's basically yellow. Gotcha. Okay. And so you can add coconut milk to it or leave out the coconut milk. Red curry is the bomb. Red and green curry, I think, are my favorite. But he cooks with he, coconut milk? He cooks with yellow. I know. That's what he just said. <laughs> but I love the red and the green. <laughs> right. Do you use cilantro? Do you use cilantro? <laughs> of course he does. Thing? No, well, what what we use in place of cilantro is something called culantro. Uh, culantro? Yeah, culantro. I've never heard of is it. Is the same flavor? But it is similar in flavor, but it is more, when I say similar in flavor, more potent. So, like, if we use, like, if a recipe calls for half cup of cilantro, Mm -hmm. I would basically just have to use a tablespoon of the culantro itself. Okay. Can you get cilantro there? <laughs> Occasionally. Occasionally. Do you like cilantro? <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. I love culantro, so... so. I'm going to put you down as a yes on our board later. No, it's culantro. Culantro. But technically, technically, it's team no cilantro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Team No Cilantro is in the lead now with four. <laughs> Hope you're happy, Chris. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, you, you love pork. Have you ever made anything Trini style that's just like, you, like I'd, I'll do a barbecue and like I think everything's coming together and I'll taste it and go, Ugh. You ever have that? Plenty, plenty, plenty times. <laughs> plenty <Yeah>. times. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I make tastes great, so yeah. I don't know. What you're about. Especially in my older, in my earlier years, my younger years of cooking, you make something and it's just like, yeah, this is not what I expected. Yeah, <laughs> I had that the other day. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, let's say uh, I I paid for your flight up here to Boise, Idaho, and you agreed to make me a turkey. And you were going to do it Trini style. How would you do it? Well, it, the only difference would be just add a little bit of the Trini green seasoning to it. Okay. Would, would so what? Uh, it, from what I understand, I could bring, I could get all that, uh, the spices and and everything together at the local grocery store. So, I think I'm going to do it. Not for a turkey. Maybe I'll make a turkey later on this week. But uh, you could do it. You could, you could do it and even do it and, like season your wings with it and fry the wings after. Okay. Ooh, chicken. Yeah. Like I know Craig did uh, chicken wings, the Parmesan chicken wings. I could do mine tranny style. What do you think? I like that yeah, idea. Because yeah. you've done them too. I, I remember you did a video where that you had wings. Hmm. I think I know uh, what one of my next wings. videos is going to be. No, the wings we like, they didn't really have any chili style, and I think I used Uncle Steve on that. Yeah, you did, you did, but yeah. I was just thinking, Absolutely. you know, but you, you may. Could, but you could do it with the um, the wings with the green seasoning. Okay, I'll definitely have to check that out. I, I'm going to try it out. I really am. That sounds good. I'm doing some tests this weekend, so I'll uh, run that by. So here's a question for you. Another one. I call you the moderator's moderator. Every show that I go to, you're a moderator in. I've only seen one that you were not, and that was on Maddie and Kiki's. No, and uh, there a few, there a few shows that I was not the moderator. Yeah, a few. Ones. How did you get started in the barbecue community? I know we touched on this last week. But for those who weren't here last week. Okay. Well. I guess like everybody else started off watching the barbecue pit boys. That was then I went like to Pitmaster X. 
Then I reached um like smoky ribs and gradually I reached straight across the uh, pickles and smoking Joe C J. Okay. And you just kinda got to know everybody and the way you go, huh? Well, after I start subscribing to channels and realized well you could converse with people and which right. was really interesting and fun to me. Yeah, I, I bet, yeah. Lots of fun. I'm always like I'll sit there and you know be on a show and hey there's Steven and you're always like, Yeah. <laughs> it's always great to have you on. Somebody you know half the time I don't know these people and it's like, Hey, there's Steven. Cool. Hi Steven, how you doing? You know. So it's that's great. Up, really hard to keep up with all the channels. So. Yeah, it's very time consuming as well. Monica, you're awfully quiet tonight. I apologize for that. <laughs> I am sick, you know. Okay. Uh, but it's okay. I'm I'm on the mend. Okay, good. Yeah. Want to make sure I wasn't uh, taking over too much. No, it's great. I I, mean, I love listening to to Stephen. Where's your wife? Where's Jacqueline? Jacqueline's his daughter. Or, oh, that, Jacqueline's nice. daughter. Um, no, we had his daughter. We had his wife the other night. Oh no, it wasn't me. It was when you guys were doing the show without me. She popped in for a second. Yeah, that's my daughter. Yeah, oh, why? My wife was Kamarachi. Oh, I was like, man, he, she's a beautiful young bride. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jacqueline's awesome. She is. Uh, just had a birthday, I think it was last month, and uh, it's doing great in school. So, fourteen years old. Wow. And Stephen good. was a is a proud papa as he should be. All right. Where'd she go? She just like left you. Yeah, she disappeared. She's doing she's homework. Still, yeah, oh, doing so homework and speaking to our friend on <laughs> speaking to our friend on the laptop there. So she's the you overachiever know. of the family. Good for her. <laughs> So, Stephen, what would you say your your first memory of cooking is? Probably from my childhood days when my mom first started to teach me how to cook. Okay. At the age of seven. Okay. Did you guys cook outside as well as in indoors, or in and out, inside and outside? Okay. And I know we talked uh, several weeks ago that Monica had asked a question about uh, how you guys, if you did pigs in the ground, is that uh, is that something you've ever done? Put no, the I pig in the ground? No. Oh, me not, neither. No, I have not done it. But you'll get it like more on the countryside of the island. A lot of people on the countryside, they would be they're definitely, because we also have like a Spanish community as well. So. Okay. I, I tried it once. <laughs> it, it did not cook good. It did not turn out well. <laughs> they didn't have YouTube back then when I tried it. <laughs> it could have been a lot different for me. <laughs> but uh, it, it came on. Um, uh, everybody just got to eat. That Everybody that came to my barbecue got to eat the like the pig that I made. Like two days later. <laughs> oh, wow. The act of the end of the barbecue. Like, <laughs> no pig to be had for anybody. <laughs> That's funny. It was pretty embarrassing, but I learned my lesson. Well, Stephen, I got one more question for you, my friend. And then uh, there's somebody at the front door, and then we'll pick up with Charlie. Um, when it comes to YouTube videos, what would be your biggest fail or blooper or anything along those lines? Mm, that would be. Video coming out next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody w wait for Steven's video next. Let's see what happens. At, at least to me. Okay. Share yeah. on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, you name it. Let's get let's get this video some views. I like it. Well, Steven, you've been an awesome guest. I really appreciate your time. I know your time is very valuable. No, uh, I, have, I have time and no problem. And so, so cool. I had a blast. I, I learned a lot about Trini style. I'm going to give it my best. And uh, invite me over when you do. I will. I will. And uh, then I'll send Steven some pictures and, and see what he thinks. Definitely. So, looking forward. Looking forward to seeing that. Right. Steven, do you have anything you want to say before you, uh, you head out? 
Well, I like to thank all of you for I like to thank you and Monica for having me on the show. It was a pleasure being here. So I'm happy Thanksgiving to all in the chat, you guys. It's always awesome to see you. Yeah, so. we loved having I loved having you on the chat. So yeah. Much love from me and Jacqueline and the wife. <laughs> yeah. Same to you guys. Same to you. All right. Well, thank Have you very much again, day. Stephen. Yes, I'll check right. those guys out in the chat in a while then. All right. Thanks again, okay. Stephen. Okay, cool, man. Talk to you soon. Well, um, I'm going to make a quick white Russian before oh. I go answer the front door. No, it's not like the other night. Uh-oh. Yeah, the other night, man, was, uh, yeah, was I got <laughs> I got crap from a lot of people over that one. Oh, man, that was crazy. Man. Uh, I was like, well, time to wrap up, everyone. <laughs> is that how it closed? I haven't watched it. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Thank you for having my back on that one. I appreciate uh, it. I really didn't feel like I did. <laughs> no, no. You just let me go. <laughs> I, I would say you were like, I don't know. It was like you were, had a serious lack of oxygen because you were yawning and yawning. And, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's what. Uh, uh, I was like, he must be really, really tired. That's what Craig was telling me, too. Man, man you yawned a lot. <laughs> And then uh, Patrick from uh, Patty Joe Cook is like, man, I think I lost count at 27 white Russians, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, when you like, I go to the bathroom, I'm like, I hope to God there's no white Russians back there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Yep. Yes, I did, Jared. <clears throat> All right. I have to go answer the front door. I will be right back. Oh, and then this. we'll have Charlie on. Charlie, oh my gosh. So while uh, Mike is doing that, uh, I'm not even going to lie. I watched your almost seven hour freaking live. That was some crazy stuff. I, You know, and I had to. It was just like, okay, this is crazy. Because there was a like, at the very end even, there's still 10 people that were on the show. It was crazy. And I kept expecting something crazy that was going to happen, but people just really love you <laughs> to want to spend time with you for seven hours. It was pretty awesome. So anyways, next time I know, you know, want to party it up there for six hours, then we're going to know who to do it with. <laughs> I want, did you do any editing? Cause I didn't feel like there was any editing done on that video. <laughs> it's all live all the time. It was great though. It was wrong, wrong door. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's good. They weren't knocking at the back door, were they? They, they weren't. No. no they weren't. Yeah, <laughs> Stephen did a great job. He I did. was just uh, telling uh, Charlie and everyone else here that I watched all almost seven hours of his live the other night, <laughs> and I'm like, I must be sick, you know? I'm like, <laughs> like we're going on seven hours here. <laughs> <laughs> that board, huh? <laughs> it was funny. It was great stuff, though. Awesome. You know, I forgot to put my banner up. Yeah. Sorry, Stephen. That was for you. A little offset. You need to offset it a little bit. So I, do, I do. I do. I do. But our next guest is Charlie from Pickles Barbecue. And I bet when he comes on, he goes, my people. I love that when he does I'm, that. And, yeah. I bet you a dollar he says it, Monica. All right. You ready? You guys ready? Let's do it. Let's bring on the man of the half hour. My yeah, I want a dollar. <laughs> you got your buck. <laughs> you got oh. your buck right there. How are you tonight, Charlie? Doing good. How are you guys? Monica, Mike? Well, I'm Hang good. Up. Monica, she's, she's alive. Let's put it I that know. Way. We're in a bathroom. I got a bathroom right here. I could have been all comfy in a bathroom and snuggly. Dude's always wearing a bathroom. You do the interview from the floor. <laughs> that would be cool. That that's a that would be a great challenge right there. Interview from the floor, like <laughs> curl up. You know, the straw. <laughs> straw. A diaper. <laughs> That would be awesome. Man. <laughs> Gross. You know, a little, little uh, drunk sippy box, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Charlie, that was a crazy, crazy live marathon you had going on the other night. 
Yes, my lives are uh, nothing but crazy. Off the hook. <laughs> it's a, they it's are a blast, it, that's for sure. It's completely scripted is the weird thing. <laughs> you never, uh, you never guess, but you know, <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> no, my lives go haywire. <laughs> I only watched. I don't know what it is about them. It wasn't like you were yelling. Things get a little nuts. Fifty times. Actually, G went live today for uh, five and a half hours. Wow! Hey. Holy moly! No, he working? Was he? Is this in the middle of the day? Yeah, he was in the middle of that. I kept popping in and out because I was like watching in the background and stuff. But yeah, that, dang, what a long, what a long life. Hey, Charlie, over there, over where, do work, where do you work again? Aren't you in IT? In I'm IT. Yeah, IT consultant. So am I. But we're um like, are you in Washington? I can't remember where you're based. No, at. I'm actually uh I'm in Colorado right now. No, that's right. You're in Colorado. Yeah. Um, I'm in uh, Denver, or outside of Denver, about half an hour. It's like a small little. What used to be a farming community. Are you doing telepresence consulting? Uh, no. I've done, I mean, I've done consulting like your remote consulting. Yeah, for telepresence. For um, not for not for telepresence then. Okay, you look so familiar, and I cannot place you, but I swear to everything I've worked with you before. I look like every other Rick Craig. Yeah. And no. <laughs> I, I think I just barely like, a Fu Man too. <laughs> no, no, uh uh no, you don't. Right you got a very distinct look. <laughs> it's something, I guess. <laughs> I'm rolling with it. That's all I know. Hey, that was what works and people remember you that way. That's good. As yeah, long as you're that, so I, I posted this on Instagram, right? I got sent this from uh Jimmy from Cuff and Stuff. Okay, yeah. Oh, I heard, yeah, I heard, yeah, you posted, yeah. I saw that, that was cool. I can't see it, what does it say? Like, that is, a it's a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I used to have one, so it's an old, like, it's an old German tradition. Yeah, yeah. I, Get to know Charlie a little bit. Yeah. Shall As we? If we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Let's show. We, we know you live in the Denver area. Where are you from? Where am I from? God, all over the thing, plus. So I was born get, in, uh, I was born in Ohio. Athens, Ohio. Uh, oh. Lived in West Virginia for a long time growing up. It must be the accent because you got just a, a tinge of an accent. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, what else? Uh, then I was in Delaware for a short time and then California. And then, yeah. Dang. All over. And then spent a lot of time traveling to different places too. Did you? Job related or? Uh, no, yeah. Or just yeah, yeah. For the hell of it. Well, both actually. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I've traveled, I've traveled to a lot of different places around the world. That's cool. Any place yeah. exotic? Uh, Hong Kong, Japan. No kidding. Uh, I spent uh, about six months traveling across Africa by myself. No way. Well, yeah. Why? Why? Because it was there. Yeah, because. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> no, seriously, because I was just like, all right, <laughs> like I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go huff it. That'd be cool. That's, and, uh, that is way cool. Just yeah. kind of like my only plan was I knew I was flying in one place and leaving from another place. Now where'd you it. fly into and where'd you leave? I flew into Harare in uh, Zimbabwe. And that was a uh, that was actually right during the elections in Mugabe, which is funny you mentioned that. I saw a thing on that today. It was it used to be. Used to be Salisbury. The only reason why I know that is I saw a thing on it today. There was, a, uh, and then they changed it to Ferrari. Boy, this, I mean, I, I mean, there's stories like every single day of that entire trip. But yeah, I flew in there, and there were riots going on, and it was a, uh, it was mayhem. And I was like, I was the only white person there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was just like, and I was just like friendly, goofy dude with a backpack, and that was pretty much it. And then I went to. Don't let him lay his backpack down, everybody. <laughs> yeah, all oh, things were things disappeared. <laughs> but um, oh, I have some on my tooth. I do. We're not looking. I do. Only Rick would notice. There you go. Thanks, <laughs> Rick. <laughs> oh, man. Appreciate it. That's a that's a Cajun peanut skin. Nice. Um, yeah, I was just chowing down on Cajun peanuts earlier. 
Um, no, but I went through, uh, so I went to Zimbabwe, uh, did a whole bunch of stuff there, and then I went to Malawi, uh, Tanzania, and up to Kenya and flew out of Kenya. I've always wanted to go to Lake Tanganyika. It's in Tanzania. Uh, I'm going to go. Um, that big lake right there in Tanzania, right on the border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there and I went to, uh, I was like, we we're at the foot of Kilimanjaro. And then Kenya. I went to, uh, like, what was the uh, Kalahari? Were you just oh, looking for a barbecue yeah. or something? Or yeah, trying yeah. to find good barbecue or what? I actually did eat a lot of barbecue there. <laughs> yeah, some of it was real uneatable, but uh, I ate a lot of barbecue. Real uneatable. Uh, I mean, I had zebra, uh, tons of goat, um, various insects of various types. Um, yeah, and then uh, South African bra. Where are you waiting? Um, are you with us back up to the insects? Were you eating them for snacks or are you eating them because like you were like, you know, staying in hostels and eating <laughs> insects to stay alive? I mean, they like, uh, well, it depends. Uh, so some of them were like, like, snack food on snack food on a stick, and some of them were like, uh, it come as like the side of a meal or something. And you do. Oh, look at the size of that cockroach. Ooh. Yeah, you, like, you, know, you, get big, you get a big bowl full of maggots. I should have brought more money on this. <laughs> like cooked maggots. You got any barbecue sauce? Any Uncle Steve shake over there? I got a big bowl of maggots here. <laughs> oh, God. Tons of protein in them. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, no, it, was a, it was a fun trip. Cool. Um, Sounds like it, man. Yeah, otherwise I've been to like Mexico a bunch of times and Canada, kind of, sort of, and then right uh, studying in France. Good God, dude! So I got a, I got a double major in English and French literature. No kidding. Hey, the classics. Go figure. Now I'm in IT. <laughs> <laughs> I studied history forever, and I'm in IT. So. Yep. Yeah, ain't gonna do anything with that degree. <laughs> See ya. Oh my God. I know you got you got a dog or two. Uh, but dude, I got uh, two huge Saint Bernards, Hannah and Frank. Okay. And then a and a and and then a cat who loves me. <laughs> Named Edward George. Edward George. Mm -hmm. Very royal. Yeah. Uh, Very he, royal name. <laughs> he's something all right. <laughs> He always wants his breakfast exactly about 5 a.m. in the morning. Oh, God. And demands it. <laughs> well, we better keep you up extra late then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't care much. <laughs> <laughs> so aside from uh, owning a cat named Edward George and getting uh, grubs in uh, Africa, what did you want to do when you were a kid? Uh, I actually wanted to be a cook. Uh, and it was for a while. I actually worked in restaurants uh, for quite a while. So for about uh, like growing up and then all into uh, about five years. Five years. Okay. How did you get in IT then? I uh, just kind of fell into it. <laughs> I did too. I, I'm, my background is retail and I fell into after, it. After school, I was a, after school, I was an electrician for a year. Good God. And then kind of got tired of that because I got tired of being shocked all the time and crawling underneath houses. And I've been... Uh, up in attics where it was, you know, 115, 120 degrees. <laughs> and so I ended up uh, just getting a temp job at an IT company and just started uh, picking up programming on the side, learned it by myself. That's how I did it too. Killed it. Uh, yep. It's the best way to go. Yeah. Uh, I started when I was 18 years old. First a day out of, uh, day after I graduated high school. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. you in after a while. And I was like, oh, this will be a temporary thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whoops. Yeah. Ain't nothing temporary about it. <laughs> long haulers. Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. You did long haul. What's that? I did, I did she, do that for a You did long haul? She was trucker mama. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you've got to have nerves of steel because you get laid off. You don't know when your next gig is. So, you know, being mom, got to make some money, has to, you still have to pay the bills. So, yeah, yeah, yeah big rigs, keep on. <laughs> well, the favorite like, game was I used to was, like, I mean, when I've, I've driven across the country into different states and whatever else, and I always stop by like uh, truck stops for, 
for food at truck stops or local cafes. Unfortunately, a lot of that truck stop uh, diners are just becoming chains. Yeah, you haven't lived until you've had a uh, eight, ten hours of yammering from the CB in your ear. Just complain, 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 complain. Or just come crazy stuff across the nation. <laughs> People You're waiting for the next rest area. Over there. <laughs> You're waiting for the next rest area. Huh? Good times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> moment. So, Charlie, what inspired you to create Pickles Barbecue, the channel? Uh, boy, boy. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, I've always liked cooking ever since I could possibly remember. And I actually did want to become a chef. My dad said, no, I couldn't. Um, so I kind of squashed that dream. <laughs> but um, yeah, but I've always cooked. And I've always enjoyed it. And I always used to watch cooking shows and everything else. And then I've been watching, been on a YouTube for, I mean, since the beginning. Since like before Google took it over and everything else. Um, and then eventually, what was I, it was about two and a half, about two and a half, three years ago, um, I ended up just saying, you know what, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> and so I just ended up going in and, uh, all right, I'll throw up a video, see what happens. I wasn't expecting what I mean, it's one of those things where you throw up your first video and you're like, oh, my God, I got a subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. Yeah. Holy <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> and then like a month later, you're like, oh, my God, there's five people now. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is nuts. <laughs> I'm getting 13 views, though. And I don't, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. They must really, really like me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, yeah okay. like you get so excited by like the small little milestone, I'm like, oh my, look at how many people view that thing. Mm -hmm. Then you look at kids, the kids these days, man, it's like they're buying houses and cars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube oh, for sure. like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, for sure. No, I asked my kids, so one day I asked my kids, like, hey, do you guys watch my videos? Because they watch YouTube all the time. They're like, nah, we watch binging with Babish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> He's not putting the roof over your head. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Come on, man. Exactly. Besides, so, it has like 8 million subscribers. <laughs> Give a little guy a chance. <laughs> so I think I've heard the story before, but where did the channel name come from? Yeah, so pickles. Um, so as a baby, my dad said my hands smelled like pickles. Or something. Okay. <laughs> like out of the womb, or were you? <laughs> I have the biggest clue. Damn, that kid smells like pickles. What the? Hell? <laughs> yeah, my hands smelled like pickles. So they kept calling me pickles, and then I kind of like that was a nickname going on. And I have always liked pickles. I actually worked at an ice cream store. And, uh, we used to make our own ice cream, and so I ended up one night. I was like, all right. I'm gonna make uh I'm gonna make black pickle ice cream. What the it was heck? weird. <laughs> it was unusual. It wasn't very unusual. It was unusual for sure. Uh, that's crazy. So how long have you had the channel? Yeah, I think you mentioned like three years yeah, now. It's been, uh, two and a half years. So half. Um, like June, was it June? Whatever, June two and a half years ago. Okay. And then I uh, started June year and a half ago. So yeah, and then uh, actually, funny thing, like two years ago, I was on the hot seat. Um, one week before Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here I am now, two years later. <laughs> I'm on, uh, on, the on, an, on another hot seat. <laughs> Braden wants to know. Uh, ask him what his favorite grill or cooker is. Uh, favorite grill or cooker? Um, I mean, I could go the easier route and say Weber kettle, and you could cook anything on that. Um, how about uh, I, I really love my old smoky. Okay, it's a it's a little grill. It's uh, oh, whole story is kind of interesting. They started out in like 1953, I think, um, somewhere in Houston, I think. Um, and they, what they, they were a bucket company. Well, one of the engineers decided to go ahead and put the two buckets together. And so you got two buckets essentially like that. 
and then made a grill out of it. And then they started that's selling cool. grills. So that's where know. the old smoky came from? Interesting. Yeah, that's where the old smoky came from. It's the funkiest little thing, and it's got cool personality. Like it's they, big. They do, that. don't they? They have personalities they of their own. It's, it's one of the few girls I've seen that really has its own weird personality. Yeah. Yeah, my pellet girl has its own little personality, and, and the Weber kettle is just kind of like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I know like, I'm good. Yeah, you know, yeah. you got to really screw up, screw up here. Yeah, but the other had, two are just like if he had a name, his name would be Bob or something like that. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. Just, <laughs> and Bob knows what he's doing. He doesn't care. Stan. Yeah. The, the Z Grill's kind of like, yeah, if I want to work today for you, I will. <laughs> and your hot spot is gonna be over here today and not there. And he's like, yeah. oh, come on. Yeah. yeah, speaking of pellet grills, boy boy. Yeah, you uh, had to struggle with one, didn't you? <clears throat> So I got the Oklahoma Jewel Rider DLX, right? And uh, boy, I'll tell you, it runs hot. So it runs at, at least 50 degrees over. And it'll spike all the way to about 100 degrees over a set town. Uh, that thing runs like a beast. I mean, fortunately, I know what I'm doing enough to be able to cook on it. But um, man, I, I feel sorry for the person who doesn't know what they're doing expected. <laughs> You know, pellet girl, you just turn it on and like <laughs> dial it in. Uh, 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 no, uh, <laughs> no, I remember the first few cooks I had on my pellet grill, and it was like, you know, I've I've heard a lot of horror stories. I got to watch this like a hawk. You, you yeah. know, you get to learn their styles and what they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I actually uh, have some replacement parts for it. So go ahead, just kind of put those on. Gotcha. I got a replacement. Uh, Are you a barbecue hoarder? Uh, I'd love to be. I got some real <laughs> parts, 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 parts. <laughs> but for uh, I mean, I got uh, you know, normal people don't just like house like extra parts for barbecues, you know. Yeah, Craig is not normal. <laughs> you guys have more barbecues. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have as many as some people. I've got like, I mean, I've got a Blackstone, I've got um, Weber Smoky Mountain. A variety of like different sizes of Weber kettles and stuff, and then um, and then the pellet grill as well as the old smoky. So not too many. So not too many. Yeah. Nah, like seven, I think. <laughs> hey, so um, uh, Craig wants to know um, what is Charlie's favorite food from childhood? Favorite food from childhood? Pickles. <laughs> Durkin's, Durkin pickles. <laughs> pickles. <laughs> favorite food? Um, I had a bunch. I mean, I'm one of those people who can just like, I don't have favorites of anything. I just rattle off big, huge lists. Um, that's one of the reasons I got like, <laughs> I get hatred on the hot seat. <laughs> what? From the guests <laughs> or the host, rather. Uh, Might be easier to name food you Besides which, I already knew their dang questions. <laughs> and that was two years ago. They still ask the same dang questions. So, is there food not, you don't nothing like? Nothing personal, Daddy Dutch. <laughs> is there anything you don't like? Anything I don't like? Yeah. Uh, the big one thing, and I've said it a couple of times, is durian. It was just, oh, yeah. Yes. I was like, I was, when I heard it, I was like, gotta have it. That sounds cool. <laughs> I, I love stinky cheese. I love weird food. I love, like, you name it, I love it. Sure. Uh -uh. Nope. Yeah. No, no, no. No. Uh, no. Yeah, no. 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 Does it mean you're in the Ludafisk also? I've never had Ludafisk, but I try it. Nasty. I try it. Yeah. No, I definitely try it. I mean, I've had yeah. like I've had everything you can possibly imagine, essentially. It's like a, a dumpster fire like behind a sushi bar or something <laughs> on a yeah. summer day. My grandma's 96 years old. And she's from uh, North Dakota, but her fan, her parents were from Norway. And every Christmas, man, we'd have lutefisk. I remember mean, just stinking up the house, man. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> in Prosser? No, no, in Richland. Oh. Uh, the one that's my grandmother's still alive. It's for it's fermented in jelly, right? Yeah, and there's lye lye in it or something like yeah, that it, too. It, and, lye? Yeah. Like, like, yeah, they use lye. On, they use lye on a bunch of fish to dry them. Yeah. And and cure them. Yep. Oh and then you, they do. you spend a lot of time rinsing the lot. What's wrong with you? Like, this otherwise, you're in serious trouble. Yeah. 
I think my grandpa just choked it down just to satisfy her, but uh, <laughs> and then he'd be out in the back. Oh, man. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, like, one thing. Like, my mom used to make meatloaf when I was growing up. I, like, I hated it. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here. I couldn't uh -huh. stand it. And then uh, the only reason she was making it, because she thought my dad liked it. Well, apparently he didn't like it either. But oh. after years and years of this whole thing, <laughs> like, <laughs> we're, we're finally saved stuff. from having to eat meatloaf her way ever again. Aww. Like, years and years later, I actually ended up making my own meatloaf a different way. It was good. Huh. Yeah, we did the meatloaf challenge last year with Carrie, who's on the chat. Hi, Carrie. That was a lot of fun. Huh. Um, nice. So Charlie um, wants uh, Craig wants to know. Um, I think it was Craig. I'm already I already lost the message here. Oh, um, do you think that the thin air in Colorado affects the pallet grill, or would you know? Like, That's a good question. Actually, anywhere else? <laughs> I don't know. Like what? Do you think that the thin air in Colorado affects the way that the pellet grill performs? Oh, uh, it is a mile hot, mile up. It is rough. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it does, but I don't know how. Um, I mean, it's still gonna. But this, I mean, with this one, it's an auger design. So if you get like a PID, it's like it's reading on the tap and you know throwing pellets in based on the tap. Um, you know, if you're, if your fire is not getting as much oxygen, which it doesn't at this level, um, then sure that can maybe, um, require more fuel. Be my sure. guess. Just a guesstimate. Do you think you get wider swings though in temp, wide swings in temperature? Because it would be like, we need more fuel. We need, you know, and it would shove yeah. a bunch in there and then it would heat it up and go, oh, too much. And then back way up, you know. Yeah, yeah some of those like puffers, you know, you, you step on them, like <laughs> the, the <laughs> all those billows. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's for the kettle grill. Some bellows warriors on them. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, if you look at like the pit, uh, what's it, the pit boss? No, not the pit boss. The uh, pit barrel cooker, the PBC. Um, you can dial in the tap if you have to like dial in it by altitude. So you let the you you change the intake as to how much air it gets based on the altitude. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's actually a cool idea if you think about it. Yeah, they actually had to test it like different altitudes and everything. I I remember, that that's remember the that. job I want. Yeah. Well, from an IT perspective, it affects electronics, so why wouldn't it? I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Did you just make that up, Monica? No, I swear to God, I used to sell TVs for HP. And we couldn't sell to anybody in Denver, for instance, because you can't get a plasma to them. It affects the pixelation and all that. It's a thing. All right. Like <laughs> she made it up, guys. No, <laughs> no it, does. it does. It does. I don't know. I'm buying it. <laughs> but I don't want to get into the nerdy side of Monica, you know. <laughs> Charlie. But if, I, but if I tell somebody and they say, what the they're like, I'll be like, like, like uh, nope, nope, talk to Monica. Like, <laughs> exactly. Here's, Here's Monica's <laughs> number here. Yeah. Their eyes will glaze over. I and heard. Walk away. And I'm just like, okay, yeah. They're like, what? She's crazy. She's crazy. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Charlie, what was your biggest challenge to starting your channel? And how'd you overcome it? Biggest challenge? Uh, well, I mean, I think it was one of the biggest challenges to go from zero to one. So you go from zero to one, and then, you know, that's a big challenge. And then one to ten, you know, or so, not that big of a challenge. So once you're like, once you kind of start to get rolling or whatever else, there's technical technical details to figure out along the way. Like, um, I had major problems with sound at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. um, probably still do. Who knows? But, uh, but a, couple, a couple of people said, like, can't hear you. <laughs> I was like, all right. Clean your ears out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here he Change the on it. <laughs> but I said, uh, no. Nah. So I went out and I bought a microphone, and uh, and that seemed to work out all right. Do you use like a lapel, a lapel uh, like microphone? I was wondering, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, are you guys right. using lapel mics when yeah. you're cooking? Like a, I just tack it on like right here. Because I don't see it. <laughs> 
I don't see it on people's videos. Oh, I've got a beard. You must. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy in the, the Harlem Globetrotters, he's pulling shit out of his uh, afro. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. See, I've got an afro. A little mic in his beard. <laughs> he's pretty nice. That's funny. Yeah, but otherwise, uh, I mean, your next challenge is going to be kind of like burnout. Yeah. Because you start making videos yeah. for a while and like, and it's, you get to the point where it's like, man, I could either cook this really quickly or I could. Or I could film it because you know, film it like even the simplest thing. Because I, I like I only have my phone, I don't have like you know, some of these guys like three, four cameras or whatever. Um, but I have my phone and a tripod, so even that's just like getting it pulling out, setting up the microphone, trying to get a different shot, different angle. Trying to get you guys have IT, you guys have IT in your background, like you guys can make this shit up, like splice shit. <laughs> no, you don't want to do this crap once you're off work, seriously. It, it yeah, it just becomes kind of a do I really want to do that or just well, do I want to have dinner? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, because it's like all right, and then it's like uh, all right, it's gonna be dinner at nine, something like that. By the time you end up uh, getting through at seven fifty-five, come on, folks, it's dinner. Yeah, here. it's like like Craig had said. You know, he makes his stuff, and then by the time he gets around to eating it, it's cold, and that is very true. Hmm. When it comes to a lot of shoots, I did uh, scotch eggs that come out on Monday, and by the time I got around to them, they were cold. Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, like half the time I'm doing a taste test, I'm like trying to whip through it as quick as I can because I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, let me whip through this thing. Yeah, I mean, it's still good. I'm not. I've I've had two two dishes that I've made that you know they were it was cold and they just it was whatever and and they just sit in the vault. You know, I'm never gonna put that out there. But, you know, just say, oh, this is wonderful, you know, when it's total crap. But most of the time for me, it, the, the, the meal's cold. I mean, and I think that's a lot of the way a lot of YouTubers are. Or, or it's at least not as hot. Yeah, it can be. I mean, I, like, I, I basically have to whip it out real quick. <laughs> After, like, because people are expecting dinner. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any cooking videos yet, but like I always think to myself when I'm watching your guys' videos, I always think, why don't they just like use and because you know there's certain things that you do in um in dishes, like you all put in onions every single time, or they're all using garlic, or they're all doing this. Like, why don't you guys have like a really great clip of <laughs> you chop an onion and then just like 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 I'm gonna take this clip, this clip, this clip, you know, and these are my ingredients, boom. And then just like make your own video that like has a bunch of different slices in it. Yeah, yeah you kind of you kind of could. I mean, some people skip like uh, some people start out doing the whole like you know I sliced up this vegetable and this vegetable and do all that stuff. I do, but um, but then some people get away from it where they're like, all right, I got the, you know I got a bowl full of stuff. It's chopped up. You know, chop stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or you know, I got, I got this rib. I already pulled the membrane. You know. Yeah. And, and I'm talking to you. Were looking, but I, I added all this stuff together. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> that would be my kind of video. Well, then otherwise it becomes like I mean, you get to the point where otherwise it just becomes a mukbang. You're like, yeah, hey, I do all this stuff, and I got a plate full of food, and uh, <laughs> here's what I made. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and here's the tape. Your whole video is just the taste test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is really I, I wish you were there. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you watch mukbangs? I struggle with them. No. No. Uh -uh. I, I used to when I first started. You know, I was like, "Oh, they're a food channel," and go subscribe to them. And you know, I mean, uh, well, kind of, sort of, because I mean, if you look at like a lot of food shows on TV, there's a lot of like, like I uh, see Andrew Zimmern, right, who travels around eating weird food. I mean, he shows like a whole bunch of traveling around. And maybe some preparation, prepar preparation, but then a lot of times he's just eating food. And so you right. end up watching him eat food. That's, that's like a that's my high paid mukbang. It was weird or whatever else, but yeah, not not like not mukbang, 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 whatever it's called. I think it's mukbang. Well, isn't that yeah, like where people are eating and then it's like really um, high def sound. Yeah, it's just people eating. Oh, it was good food. Is that what you guys are talking about? Like this new craze where they're like. Uh, People record themselves like you know really high def um, sound bites of them like eating chips or like doing weird shit. Running oh, across uh, I think you might be talking about ASMR. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's what it is. Yes, yeah. ASMR. Yeah. ASMR is yeah. That's ASMR. Weird. 
that's that, that's one of the many things they do in ASMR is eating. I don't get that at all. The last thing you want to do is hear something. But it's big. It's big deal. <laughs> right. And actually, people like hearing people eat. It, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Have you heard of that, Mike? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Like, there's a whole bunch of different stuff. They'll like, they'll yeah, read through something, or they'll flip pages on a book, or scratch the nails across something. Or... Uh, just rubbing my hand through my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, sure. Somebody needs a timeout, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Mike does ASMR fart videos. <laughs> I can see that. That's my next video, Chris. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you never know, man. It might work. <laughs> no kidding. I should try it. <laughs> mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I Charlie, you... from this guy for a few years at work. Let me tell you. <laughs> and if there was a smell of vision, you wouldn't want that either. <laughs> <laughs> She can always tell that I did something when I was like wafting, wafting, like, or uh, is there oh, hang that's... time? Is there hang time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Mike, shut up, shut up, Mike. <laughs> uh, Charlie, you know a lot of YouTubers. How many have you met in person? Uh, one and a half. One and a half. One and so a half. you met cooking 1.5, then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not met them. I met the, so I met Jason, I met Jason Ganahl. Uh, he's like a local dude and he's got YouTube videos. He was out for a long time and he's just recently started putting videos back up. He, he owns a restaurant out here. Um, and then I met uh, Joe from uh, Smoke Joe's Pit Barbecue. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah Joe's cool. You haven't met Chris? I'm not. He almost came by. He, it, we, it was real close. We were talking on the phone and planning it out and everything else. And then unfortunately, his plan, it, like his light got switched last minute to somewhere else but hopefully one day before he retires next year yeah and then, and then there was that one person that wanted to come and meet you <laughs> but you're acting dodgy who was that <laughs> i don't know um it was that really long 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 life i mean i learned so much about you guys that night it was crazy. oh the last it that was, was a very long. Yeah, that was a that was one of the longer lives I've ever seen. It was enlightening. <laughs> and unfortunately, it was mine. <laughs> my <laughs> was like, so my lives always start out like ah, I'll just be on for a short bit, and then uh, yeah, they go on for a long time. Yours are never short, dude. <laughs> <laughs> seven, it was seven hours was a a bit of a stretch, but it worked. So I'm like, I'm not going to watch this whole thing, like, you know, two hours into it. I'm like, oh, I'm definitely not going to sit here for Yeah, Chris, Chris didn't even jump in until, the, until, like, near the end. And he said, said, no, don't go. I'm like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on here for seven hours. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can't. I have so many dang people. <laughs> that was funny. And they were hanging on, too. Oh, yeah. And I have no idea. Like, to be honest with you, like, half these lives, I, don't even, I can't even remember who was on. But do you know they're very loyal know followers? They're your loyal followers, so you got to treat those Some folks. people. Jump in, and it was fun. <laughs> you better be sending yeah. Christmas cards to those folks. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm Mike. Sure how I miss it. I do a lot. Yeah, there you go. First, I know Mike was on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mike, no, but he was. Mike was on one of my lives. Like really, only was like a couple. forty-five minutes, and then he gone. <laughs> what did you yeah, do? Yeah, he gone. Who else? Hey, there have been a couple of people that I have never seen on anyone else's live on my live. I see the background. I'm like a bar fly. I'm just sitting there watching, waiting for something to happen. They're <laughs> like, fun. They, they really are. Happen. Yeah. Who was a sent one one thousand was on one of my lives. Yep. Um, never seen before on anyone else's lives. He shows up on ours every once in a while. He oh, was he? on last week. Yeah. Uh, he's a character. And then. Uh, that was it. The real Joey B. Um, yeah, a couple other folks. I was like, man, that's cool. <laughs> right on. They're mesmerized by you. <laughs> the Miller Light will do that to who, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. No, I mean, sure. I started doing the whole, uh, like, I like the StreamYard thing, so you can invite people in, mm -hmm. and then you can... 
make a quick break for it. <laughs> it's like, anyway, I got to like, you know, as opposed to like, you know, a single dude show where it's like, yeah, I kind of got to go. Yeah. And I'll just leave the front door. <laughs> Yeah. I answer the front door and I'll just leave you here for a while by yourself. <laughs> Entertain yourselves. People don't yeah. like that. And then Chris <laughs> takes over your show and starts playing music and shit, trying to get you all. That's that Chris. Thrown off. Yeah, that jackal did that. Yeah, that, that's Chris for you right there. I don't know. He came in <laughs> the music. I was like, Dude, I'm out. <laughs> I know. In your description, you got to add like all of the credits. For the <laughs> I was like, oh, I bet he was hating him that night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. Charlie, what's your earliest memory of barbecuing? Earliest memory of barbecuing. I mean, uh, growing up, we always had uh, we always had Weber kettles, so we had like a uh, either the standard size, and then we had a, like a bunch of smaller ones too. And I remember like sitting there, I had like this teeny tiny little uh, like little lawn chair, and I used to sit there and just kind of, like grill hot dogs or hamburgers on it. <laughs> and I know, like my dad be like, "Just go for it." <laughs> I was like, "All right." <laughs> well, you're my age, and then when I was a kid, that was the thing. Weber kettle. Everybody had a Weber yeah, kettle. It was a Weber kettle, and then eventually, uh, when I was in high school, we ended up getting a, a Weber gas grill. Yeah. And added that to the whole mix. I mean, like after, like after school, I come home and make myself a snack on that thing at the time. Okay. Fun. Yeah, Weber kettle is 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 the bomb. My my grandma still has one, probably from the '60s. Out yeah, back. Uh, it's probably worth the bank too. Yeah, no kidding, and it's in pretty good shape too. Probably hasn't been used in thirty years, but uh, yeah. Oh, people pay people pay good money for those things. Yeah, and you can. I, just, I just got a new. I got a new barbecue this weekend. Where the kettle? Uh, no, it's from the dumpster. <laughs> I've gotten there. several from the dumpster. That's a good. Let's get them. I'd never seen one like it before. It was a barbecue. It was like an electric barbecue, like stand up, and I'm short. I'm like real short. So it, w but it was so cute because it was my size. It was like, it was like a barbecue, but like up here, you know, like I all I do is like take off the lid like this, and I was like, this is so cool. But it, it was by Charbroil. Oh, Charbroil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it yeah. worked. It worked, and it was like you know, you plug it yeah. in. There's no bar. There's no briquettes. There's nothing. It's just plug and go. Yeah, Charbroil's uh, Charbroil is Oklahoma and Joe's parents' company. Is it really? Yeah, I didn't realize that. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's right a pretty nice grill. You guys would be jealous, I'm pretty sure, because you guys, you know, you have like legit barbecues, and <laughs> here's this electric barbecue. <laughs> Where the what the hell? Where'd you get that? You know, as long as you're having fun, that's what matters, <laughs> yeah. in my opinion. I, I don't, don't care. I don't care what you Mike. got. Just have fun with it. I didn't Thank want you to shame me, Mike. Though I always no. took it to your oh. house. <laughs> no, it, like I said, as long as you're having fun, that's all that matters. I don't wonder what you got. Yeah, as long as you're having fun and the food's good, I'm 100 percent down with that. Yeah, I started with a gas grill, you know, before the Weber. Yeah, and you know, and I, and I had it in my first videos, old gassy, and it worked. It was a great, great grill. It you've just been didn't... cooking some good barbecue for a while, and you've had some pretty. Yeah, well, I learned how to do it on a gas grill, though. But that was not the, the challenge. Was is yeah. how to figure out how to do it, you know, on a pellet grill or. Or on a, a I flat top. Like I learned barbecue from you, and I pretty much remember learning. You were just like throwing wood on a fire, and so right. that's how I barbecued for years. Right. Wood on the fire. Now the shrimp <laughs> on the bobby. <laughs> wood on a fire for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, half the time, if you go over to somebody's house, they got a gas grill. Or if you're going like, you know, you go on vacation, you get one of those uh, rental units with like a with like a. They've got the like grills out in the thing. Half the time, they're gas grills. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. You can do anything yeah. on a gas grill. Pretty much. You know, if you just have the patience and and a little bit of uh, ingenuity, you can do anything. I've smoked on a gas grill. Yeah, you, you can know? smoke on a gas grill. Yeah. No, uh, I, I have I have a Cuisinart 360. Kent calls it the round blackstone, and I've smoked on it. It's just a flat top, gas flat top. I've smoked on it. It's no biggie. Yeah, true, true. Hey, I don't want to break in, but um, uh, Craig wants to know uh, how long you've been growing your your beard and do you want to a rock do you want to join and create a rock band with him <laughs> it's easy top right. i've heard this one before <laughs> do it correct yeah. uh, okay, man. We have awesome. the garage barbecue. 
Nah, I mean, I've had my, uh, yeah, I've had my beard for, uh, I mean, it grew, like, it grew on and off kind of ever since I could. I used to have, like, a goatee, just kind of get, kept growing it in and out, growing it, like, growing it out, shaving off, growing out, shaving off, growing out, shaving off. But, um, like, I, I haven't really shaved, I trimmed it, but I haven't really shaved it off for about the last seven years, seven, eight years. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now that's going beyond just no shember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, yeah, my kid comes up to me and he's like, he's like, look, I haven't shaved. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. yeah. <laughs> <It's so laughs> yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> he's like, it's no shaver. <laughs> like, yeah, <I> don't know. <laughs> So where did my people come from? So I started, so I used to say that to my kids all the time. I still do actually. Um, I just walk in and I'm like, hey, ma, I say ma, little people. <laughs> little people or just people? <laughs> uh, well, when they're little, I'd say my little people. Uh. And then uh, they got bigger. So now it's kind of like my people. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but then I sent it on video one time, or like just out of the blue. I just kind of like when I was doing an intro because I did, like I do about like twenty intros because most of them are a complete disaster. <laughs> <laughs> and then like and then I get bored and start messing around, and uh, and so I, one of them I said that, and then people commented, and then I said it in the next video, and then I guess and then it became a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I've heard people comment about it. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. He has a uh, what? Uh, I don't know where I came up with this question. I'm not. I don't quite recall what I was thinking. But what is your go-to style of cooking? That might have been actually meant for Stephen. But what is yours? Uh, my go-to style. Um, well, I love sandwiches. I'll tell you that. Much. Oh, who does? Yeah, that's yeah. a guy thing. Yeah. So normally, I'll have like so. Normally, I'll have dinner, and then I'll have a, a sandwich, and then sometimes another sandwich, and then um, and then ice cream. So it's it, like I love sandwiches, but um, I think my go-to is kind of uh, probably uh, probably Asian, like just for simple, just for simple sake. Because it's dead simple to do a stir fry or a fried rice or you know ramen or anything else. It's like dead simple. I uh, love Mexican as well. Um, Who doesn't? Yeah, <laughs> it's, real good. it's just Asian is like so dang easy. It's like it's you know, delicious. Get, get some noodles or some rice and just <laughs> like cook up something real quick and chuck it on. And my, oh, and I think one of the very first videos I watched of yours on YouTube was you doing like ramen. <laughs> I did ramen noodles once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually thinking about remaking that. I'm thinking about remaking four or five of my originals. I love ramen. It's good. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. yeah. I, I lived on that stuff. Yeah. You amp it up. You're in good shape, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. This has a great idea. Hmm. You should start a new channel called I Love Sandwiches. <laughs> I make sandwiches all the time. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, what's up, Kenneth? I am drinking Natty Light today. I'm out of Miller Light, unfortunately. Yeah, we got a lot of people in here tonight. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Very humbled. Charlie, you know what tomorrow is? What are you cooking? Uh, I am going to cook. So. So for tomorrow, for Thanksgiving, I'm actually going to make a ham. Oh, good call. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to make a um, maple bourbon apple glazed ham. That sounds good. Yeah. And then um, I still want my turkey. <laughs> so, well, you got to look like a king, you know, walking around with that big leg. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I was, was going to be all happy doing the ham and stuff, but then I'm like, man, no, uh-uh. I gotta have my turkey, so I'm uh, I'm gonna go pick up a turkey at some point, and then uh, so I'll do that in the next couple of days or so. Nice. When they're on sale. 
I actually did. I'm doing a turkey right now, and I'm using yeah. Jared's brine from Frack Daddy. Ooh, nice. I'm doing it just like he made, and I am looking forward to that big time. Are you okay. frying it, or are you going to bake it? Yeah. No, I'll, I'll put it on the smoker. Okay. But his brine had thyme and rosemary in it. And uh, it had like, yeah, so like, I mean, turkey, and then you got and then I make jibble gravy. That's good stuff right there. Yeah, uh, it's super good. And then, uh, of course, mashed potatoes and stuffing. Oh, God. Stuffing. What is it? A, there's no holiday without a stuffing. you got to ask. I'm going to make a killer stuff, too. I actually want to do a video on it at some point. You should. You should, you should do it tomorrow so we can see it. <laughs> <laughs> before, I'll probably do it before Christmas. I, did a prime, I like prime rib. I'm a prime rib girl. And then I'm doing, um, of course, stuffing. Um, but I like the Emerald Lagasse's recipe for open is it open oven prime rib. Messy as all get up, man. Mm. So if you're just literally sticking the prime rib inside the oven, open like in a, like on a cookie sheet, on a rack, but like no foil, nothing. It's a hot mess. Like your oven, shoot, it is dirty and greasy. Like by the time you're done, but it is so so good. Mm. It's the best prime rib ever, really. I like prime rib. <laughs> but do not yeah. use don't do not use your self cleaning oven afterwards though, because your <laughs> house will catch fire. <laughs> I tried it one time and no. Yeah. Hey man, the fire department is only like literally like a mile down the road. Hey, no, no, you can. So you're out perfect. That fast. <laughs> a lot of I feel like it was a, a lot of grease. <laughs> I flames, I flame shooting out the front. Of yeah. the I, was like, I was like, man, I didn't feel like cleaning it up. Come on back. I, I, it's like, <laughs> I, I even put in, I never comment like on professional, you know, like, um, you know, food network shit. You know, like they post it. It's like, oh, okay, thanks. And you go off and you scamper off and you make it, whatever. But that Emerald Lagasse, what? <laughs> I commented. He knows like, what he's like, talking about. Hey, he's good. A preface inside your guys's, uh, you know, the very beginning of that video because I'm telling you right now that will burn your house down if you try to do like a self cleaning oven afterwards. Oh. Oh, Monica, I'm... Monica, Laura wants to know if you ship via FedEx. <laughs> ship what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Prime rib. Oh, the prime rib. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> I can, uh, it's I it's in the mail, Laura. <laughs> I love yeah. the comments on those videos, though. You get those comments where it's like, hey, just made this. Except I changed this and this and this and this. <laughs> no, I And this and you like this and more of this. And I changed it. I'm like, you didn't even make the same dish. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, it was for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You made a taco. <laughs> I'm like, what? <Yep. laughs> I didn't really, I don't like peanut butter. I'm allergic to it because I had. Yeah. So I, I love your tamales. How do you make your tamales? You say you give the exact recipe and you're like, what? What is this? you did not make my tamales. I'm not sure what you made. Oh, yeah. yeah. You get, the, yeah, you get the people, hey, it's not authentic. That's that, that was hilarious. Maybe because you didn't make them the yeah. way I authentic, <laughs> authentic is basically what your mom made. <laughs> and everyone's mom is different. Uh, Cliff Notes kind, or you got the. <laughs> You know, the ones that you could taste the love in their food. Kind yeah. Of. That's grandma's right there. Right. Exactly. It's like yeah. you could taste That's it. grandma food. Charlie, is anybody else cooking or is it just you tomorrow? No, uh, it's always just me. <laughs> <laughs> it's no. the same boat. <laughs> oh, I'm telling Jean. <laughs> go, go ahead. She's the one that says it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she tells me that she trained you though. <laughs> uh, you see a lot of these people where they're saying, like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm all the outdoor cook and all the inside stuff my wife does and whatever else. Exactly. Uh, I pretty much do it all. Outdoors. She bakes, I, I do the rest. Uh, women, just, call, women call that porn for women. <laughs> <laughs> Give you guys a vacuum or a, a broom <laughs> while you're doing that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I do the baking do, but the only thing I like baking wise is like uh, biscuits, bread, like that sort of thing. I'm not a, I'm not a huge. I've made pies a couple of times, but I'm not a huge dessert person. Oh, yeah. Cookies and biscuits for biscuits and gravy. That's about all I bake. Yeah, biscuits and gravy is real good. Mm -hmm. Well done. Yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 My biscuits and gravy. 
Charlie, what's your favorite holiday dish? Favorite holiday? Uh, dish. 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 Um, for Thanksgiving, it's a. Uh, it's got to be gravy and stuffing. I'm gonna say giblets. I would have thought giblets, but yeah, it's gonna be jibble gravy and stuff. Okay, when you guys okay. say giblets, are you guys talking about like um neck, heart, liver, uh, yeah, neck, yeah, okay. liver? I when you know, see, but I see the the chicken livers because that's where the good stuff is. I don't like all the tendons and stuff in in the giblets. Yeah, hey, yeah, like in the fridge right now, I got a a packet of chicken hearts and gizzards. It's, it's good. It's good if you cut out all those little tendons and crap good stuff yeah it is yeah yeah my grandparents can make it like crazy man it's like oh and i can't i can't even come close to how they did it you should definitely swipe <laughs> some from the table and bring them to me this <laughs> ready to go for tomorrow too yeah i know we need one of those like we need a barbecue organizational shipping uh, <laughs> <Right. to> go. <laughs> <laughs> situation on, yeah. <laughs> like cabal something like that what were you uh, doing what is that <laughs> like i see uh, you yeah, it's just a mismatched silverware <laughs> <laughs> or just a drone that flies around place to place picks it up and drops it off yeah all right guys well i need to take a quick break to answer the front door seriously mike yeah <laughs> yeah it's called being 53 years old Oh God. And uh bless him, Lord. You know, <laughs> Lord. He ain't right, Lord. And I gotta give myself a reason to cough. Oh god. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let's invite everybody in while you're out doing your business. <laughs> <laughs>